Hello everybody, Cordon again here. I just wanted to put out a quick guide on deck building basics. I know I've seen a lot of posts on how to build your first decks and what to do in the first town. So I've come up with a few decks that cost about 675 shards, which is the shards you're going to be going to get, or you're going to get by using the perk system and getting all the shard perks. Uh, you can vary these decks a bit, but I want to highlight some of the important cards and ways to go and give you some good examples for that. It also so let's uh, head on into town and see what we got here. Alright. Now for the town upgrades, I'm going to be... My save file has all these uh, upgrades over here. So I'm going to avoid crafting any rare cards in these decks because that takes 9 supplies, but I will have some decks with 2 uncommon crafted cards and some common crafted cards up to 2. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we got for Magnus. In uh, Magnus' deck, I didn't really change much. I changed the intercepts to both be yellow repair armors, which do the same thing, but also add 2 and reinforce, which will give you 30% damage resistance on whoever you use it on. Very good for your backline on the early chapters, as it will prevent the backstabbing uh, Knolls from doing loads of damage to your backline. And it also can be used on Magnus too to refresh his reinforce. I took out two defends, replaced them with two guards. That gives him fortify, or any other hero in the party fortify, which lets you carry your block over in the next turn. And I also replaced some of the fast strikes, or a fast strike and a rend, with two shield bashes, because these are great cards as they allow your Magnus to take get the benefit from uh, let's go to level and traits. Either of his level threes here. Since they count as a melee attack and a defense card, shield bashes will be good no matter what trait you pick. Uh, I didn't uh, go examine that. Let's go ahead and load the deck. And examine this. You get a melee attack, attack, and defense card. So that's pretty good. Now when you're... We reach the point where you're able to craft the uncommon... Or the rare cards in your starting decks. Two really good ones to pick up are Stockade. And either version's great. I this the yellow version is pretty amazing because although it offers less thorns, where that's a lot of damage done to the enemies. You'll also be getting Vitality Charge, which is 5 HP for everybody, so Magnus acts in as a little bit of healing. You also get access to Battle Shout, which does nearly the same thing. You probably want to upgrade that to the yellow one, so you get Vitality, Reinforce, and 20% damage for everybody in your party. Really good there. And another big one is Entrench. This is a really good card for tanking, and it upgrades into a fantastic 5 cost <laughs> here later on. Which will allow you to give Fortify to your entire group, which is very, very good. And let's move on over to Andrin and Scouts. I believe what I did with his deck, I didn't change too much, but I did uh, craft a few interesting cards. I like usually having one chant of initiative in there, just so he can speed up the healer or speed up Magnus if he needs to go and get some blocks in. I got a yellow trace, which lets you play this on it. It starts in your starting hand, lets you play it on any hero, and lets them filter out their cards if you need to get your big defenses on Magnus early, or you need to get big heals out on Reginald early. Setup lets you sift through the cards, so you can draw what you need faster. Slices I upgraded to yellow, they're pretty cheap, they add mark. Ricochet I also added in there for the... over one of the aim shots. And this version's pretty good. It adds mark, jumps, does good damage. And for this, I believe I just... I should have kept the old deck up there, but I just removed some of the aim shots and I think one of the ruptures and came up with this. Then when you're able to upgrade into rare cards, rare cards you might want to look at are Blade Dance, Eternal Lullaby if you're running a... Any kind of bard build is really, really good. And a knife's excellent if you're running any kind of sharp build. Hidden weapons if you're using small weapons at all. Music sheet's pretty fun, generates some 
some songs for you. And, uh, of course, some setups are also in the rare pool. Sharpening the knife is very, very good. Gives you a lot of extra damage. Sneaky Strikes, also very good. Gives you stealth, which makes your next attack do 20 to 40% more damage, or 20% damage more per charge, 40% with the two charges here, and you use that before you use a big AoE, and you'll be doing lots of damage. Wicked Craftsman is also a really good card. Craft. It lets you discover a small weapon and reduce its cost by two and put it directly into your hand. And then move on over to Evelyn. Evelyn, her deck, I don't believe I changed too much either. I picked up these Shock Novas, which are really, really good cards to get on her because they will... What happens usually is Evelyn will go after the monsters and then... If you draw into a Shock Nova, make sure you have 4 energy almost at all times when you're playing with Evelyn. You can upgrade these to cost 3, which might be preferred. But what Shock Nova does is it pretty much gives you a whole extra turn before the enemies get to go again. Because they'll all be slowed by 6 speed whenever you cast it. I believe I removed 1 charge battery, 1 frost bolt, 1 fire blast. I ended up upgrading the elemental wards to cost 0. It's a very cheap upgrade. Upgrade the fire blast to by fire and I also purchased one of these shifting scrolls which lets you reveal two spells from your draw pile and put one in your hand really good if you want to get your shock nova out first turn and then transmissions you can upgrade pretty well uh, be cheaper or just always last and let's go to the forge rare crafts for mages that are good hmm Clear Instructions Blue version. It's a bit expensive, but it's, it does get you out of a lot of binds when you play it. Unless you discover a random skill and put it in your hand, it costs a little bit less. If you're going for a fire build, you definitely want to buy a combustion or two. Ice build, Cold Snap is really good. This one in particular right here because it lets you pick two cold spells from your discard pile and put it in your hand and the cost of those cold spells are reduced by two each. Which means you're getting a total discount of 3 mana when you play this card. And let's see here. Flame Strike, pretty good. It's a big AoE for 5. Your more Flames, one of my favorite cards, does a lot for you. Gives you uh, 2 free Fireballs. And if you upgrade it to the blue version over here, you can play this on any other hero. So you can uh, play this on your Andrin or Reginald, who will get... Andrin is able to sift through his deck faster, so he'll be able to pull these fireballs fast. Or Reginald will be able to use the blessed damage to increase that damage by one on both sides and one in the middle for every bless he has. Icicle Barrage, also a great spell. Craft. There's a lot you can do with the mage decks. Life Taps, good crafts as well. Mana Surge, great KRS. The net two mana for the whole party. Librarian. Blue Librarian, very great craft. It lets you discover a book and place it in your hand and reduce it by two, so you're actually gaining a bit of mana when you're playing this. Scorching Ray is very good. Scrolls of Intellect, insanely good. Replenishment. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff you can do with mages. Tome of Intellect, also really good. And probably my favorite book here is this uh, Winter Night's Tale yellow version. It'll give you a selection of four cold spells, and you get a Pick two to put in your hand, and they're discounted by two. You're only saving one mana, but you'll be getting the chance at some really, really powerful spells. And that's about it for Evelyn slash Mage deck basics. So let's head on over to Reginald. Now the Priests, I'm probably going to talk uh, multiple times about them, because the Priests play quite a bit different from each other. They all heal in different ways. So... On to Reginald's deck, you're probably going to want to go to the... make a lot of changes. A lot of the changes happen just by upgrading the cards. I usually remove the Foresights because I know it's coming, but if you feel like you need to see what the enemy's doing, you can keep those in. But you can take them out if you can craft a rare cards because I'll show you a rare card that's really good here in a minute. You'll want to upgrade the barriers to do heals. You'll want to upgrade the flashes to draw or be free. 
the heals, you definitely want to upgrade them all to cost one. Holy Smites I usually do for extra damage since it's a cheap upgrade. And then I will throw in a Prayer of Healing in there and raise the cost to three instead of two. Just so it does more healing for everybody, add some regen. And this deck will cost you 672 with a full craft, but if you can't afford it because you don't have the discounts, you can probably swap down the Flashes and the Holy Smites and still be able to afford the Yellow Prayer of Healing. Now, good Priest cards you'll want to look for are... Divine Insight is insanely good here because it applies four Sight on everything and four Sanctify on everything, which is pretty much healing your whole party for 16 or more as they hit the enemy. And as long as there's four different enemies, it's a bit costly, but it is definitely worth the cast. Upgrading it to six is also worth it. Upgrading it to the blue version is very worth it too. Fanaticism, I did not talk about that in his basic deck, but it's a card you want to play sparingly. You don't want to play it every time, but if you're beefed up from your tank, it's definitely a card worth playing as it's two free mana. Blue Fortune Telling is a really good card to throw on any priest deck. It gives you gives a hero inspire, so they draw one more and lets them sift through their deck and draw. Look through eight of their cards, and that's like half their deck if they're playing the minimum 15, so you can really get any card you want at any time. Holy Fire is a great card if you're running a Fire Evelyn or Cornelius, so definitely craft those. Even if you're a full heal build, if you have a Fire Mage, you definitely still craft this because it's going to be a ton of damage added on. You're just working... You're just dealing damage based on how well your Fire Mage is doing, so it's free real estate. Holy Storm, very good, especially the 5 cost version on Reginald. This 4 cost version is better on Otis. Panacea is really good. Description's really good. It lets you discover healing spells, put them into your hand with this blue version. Yellow version lets you put it on top of your deck. Spark of Life is a really good healing spell you might want to consider. It uh, just bounces, does a ton of healing. You'll definitely want to upgrade it as soon as you get the chance because it boosts from one heal to two heal. In addition to the jump bonus, every time it jumps is really good. Uh, yellow version is really good. Even though it starts out a random hero the first time, jump randomly does it to another target in your party, so getting the discount is really good. If you're playing Otis, you're probably going to want to go for more shielding cards. And the best shielding card you can get in the game is uh, Sanctuary, but that's not craftable here. And some of Hope is pretty darn good for... Otis, as it's a defensive card and triggers one of his level up things. Uh, let's look at his other defensive options. Prayer of Protection is really good for Otis. Save it for your later can be. Protect from Evil is a really, really good card. Especially when you get this All Heroes version. And then you also have the Master Spell that might be craftable here, or you might have to wait till the second time to craft it. Yeah, you'll have to wait till the second time to craft it. And I'm going to quickly touch on Maluka and Nezglek, the two other healers, as they heal through applying Dark Stacks and Insanity Stacks, respectively, and Sight Stacks. With Maluka, you're just going to want to touch up... Why am I typing that? Uh, Vile Lance is one of her starting spells. You want to upgrade both of those to yellow, make them cost cheaper. And possibly look into getting some Unholy Storms. Very good cards. She also does really good with a healing rainer too, which uh, synergizes with her level one talents. She's really good at regen, dark, and those are the big ones you want to look into. And then for Nesglect, you'll want to just look into, uh, I think it's not clarity, it's clairvoyance, right here it is. I believe most of the Nesglek mains and Nesglek players usually make yellow and blue, like a mix of them in their starting decks. And then you'll want some Mind Visions and as well as some, um, just anything. You can just filter here for cards that do insanity and you'll get good uh, pop-ups here. Pandemonium is really good. Temporal Strikes is really good. 
for slowing down like a boss monster, spectral missiles. Uh, and that would be about it for the basics of every class and every character. So I hope this helps your deck building prowess and you get a little bit of idea what to do in the first town. One more thing you can do is the shop won't always have good items for you. Like here, I'll buy this play all for Andrin. So he draws every time he does this thing. And I'll buy this horn helmet for Magnus. But if I'm going to be leaving town with about a thousand gold, we can always head to this Zingarian cart and we can do divinations, which let you pick up cards. Now you want to do divinations at the end after crafting your decks, because if you try to uh, load a deck and then, or if you divination first and then load a deck, you're not going to be able to load the deck. So you'll want to load your deck and then hit up the divinations. And see, we got a really nice defend here. We're going to just grab it. Uh, go through here quick. Hit and run might not be bad, but no. And no for them. And this will also... The Zingarian cart will also give you shards. For not picking cards. And it's a good way to get enough shards to get what you want if you... Misplayed and didn't get what you want. Shield charge is really good. Another card you might want to consider putting in Magnus's decks. We'll grab the Ember Storm that shining force since it's there and you, you don't have to keep your deck around 15 but i like doing that since smaller decks is usually more consistent but build how you want i just wanted to give out a few example decks and a few example cards and hope you guys find that useful thanks for showing up and have a great day later oh wait that's not ending it boop